welcome to Microsoft Excel 2010, Working with Advanced Functions, brought to you by Shift Key Solution, and I am Eric Ripley. In this video tutorial, you'll see that this is part five, the final part of our series on working with advanced functions. This video tutorial, we're going to cover not only, not only the substitute function for exercise five in our advanced Excel custom classroom training manual, but we're also going to cover some other cool little tricks of like text to columns, and then we're going to do a couple of nested functions. So let's take a look at this. This is really more of like a project-based tutorial. So here's our scenario. We have uh, an IT department uh, worksheet here. Let's look at this. Well, our first exercise here in exercise five will be to separate these names out so that our first name and our last name are in separate columns because how many times have you worked with a list of data that maybe you receive from somebody else and when you receive it it looks like something like this and then you're asked to create additional information from that well this is poorly created so let's separate this out the first formula we're going to use is called well it's not a formula the first step we're gonna do is separate the first name from the last name so let's select this range and I'm gonna select it this way I use a little trick where I select the first record in a series and I'm gonna do shift control arrow key down and it selects just that column of information once that's selected I'm gonna go to my data tab and then over in the data tools group I'm going to click text to columns and then from here my dialog box appears I'm going to click next because it is delimited next and then in this case it, there's only a space delimiting these two or separating them it could be one of these others or I could type in a custom one and I've had people say should I deselect tab leave it selected if it makes you feel better, you can deselect it, but otherwise you don't need to. Here's our preview. It's going to show us how many columns of information we're going to have. I'm going to click Next, and here's where I can identify these columns of information. I'm going to leave that just as it is. It's simpler. I'm click Finished, and there it is. It separates it out. My next step is I'm going to come into the field header and call this first name. There it is pretty easy now for my user ID the user ID is going to be last name comma first name that's their user ID pretty simple stuff so how can I create a formula that will identify this and then also put it in proper case in an earlier video tutorial in this series we talked about using the proper function well we're gonna use it again so we're gonna do equals proper there it is now but I'm going to put a nested function in here. Not only do I want to proper a particular name, but I also want to concatenate, meaning combine these two here. So I'm going to do concatenate. There it is. And in this case, I'm going to do B3, which is the last name, comma, open quotations. And I want to separate it with a comma, close quotations, and then comma, a3 close the parentheses and then click my enter check mark look at that that's a pretty neat little trick huh not only did we concatenate these two bits of information which some of us may be pretty familiar with but did you know you can nest a function in there called proper and combine them so let's fill this down again I just double click my fill handle now let's talk about our email address we don't have one here, but everybody in the IT department has the same email domain. So I'm going to combine the first and last name together and add the same domain name. It's real simple, it's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to do an equal, and in this case, I mean, how are emails uh, usually written out? All lowercase, right? So I'm going to put my lower function in here. Lower, and then I want to concatenate, and I'm going to do A3 comma open quotations and in this case it's a underscore right in an email your first name underscore 
last name is probably most common. Of course you can have a dot there as well, but you just replace the underscore with a dot in that case. And it's, it's going to be B3, comma, open quotations, and, I, and this is where I put in my domain, at itschool.edu. Close quotations, close the parentheses, let's click our enter check mark, we'll look at that. That was really cool. So I'm going to fill this down. There you go. I'm going to open this up. There it is. That's a quick and easy. Now I've had students say to me, well, what if somebody has a middle name and is in there? Okay, that's going to happen. But I promise you it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a smaller percentage than the overall. I'm meaning to say 70% or more are going to be just standard. So for those few instances, yeah, go to it and modify it. Otherwise, this is a wonderful time saver. Now let's talk about new email addresses. In this case, in this scenario, we have their email address, which is fine, but now we have a list of new email addresses. We're just going to pretend that we opened this up and we just added this new column of information. We want to retain this column of information while adding the new one. The only thing that's changed in the new email address is the domain of the email. So in this case, this is where I'm going to use my function. Well, the function that's highlighted in this tutorial, which is called the substitute function. I'm going to do equals substitute. There it is. And what I want to look at and identify is D3. I want to substitute what is inside D3 and see how it tells me old text. What do I what do I want to look at to replace? Well, again, because it's text within there, I'm going to put quotations IT school dot edu close quotation comma open quotations and this is the new text I want to replace it with IT university dot com nice so we're not just an IT school anymore we're a university oh boy growing looking good so let's click our enter check mark see if it applied that's nice fill it down wow folks if you can appreciate this kind of convenience and time saving then um, I'm not sure what will impress you that's our video tutorial I uh, hope you enjoyed it if you didn't know how to do this beforehand well, now you know. And again, I encourage you to share this information with as many people who might need help with this. And in doing so, you're going to look like a rock star. I hope this was helpful, and don't forget to comment.